Hello everyone, today we'll take a look at the key features of Pivot Chat. Watch till the end and you'll learn how to create Pivot Chats like a pro. I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. You encourage me to keep posting videos and I appreciate you all. If you are yet to subscribe, what are you waiting for? Please click the button now. Thank you. Pivot Chats are connected to a pivot table and they allow you to analyze and visualize data trends. In other words, a pivot chart is a visual representation of a pivot table. There are several methods you can use to create a pivot chart. However, we'll take a look at two of them. Here's our data. Insert a pivot table from the Insert tab. Place on a new worksheet. Let's drag product to rows and sales to values. Next, go to the Insert tab or Analyze tab to insert a pivot chart. Let's go with a clustered column bar chart. There. You can also create a pivot table and a pivot chart simultaneously. Click anywhere in the data. Go to the Insert tab. Click on Pivot Chart. It doesn't matter what option you pick from the drop-down list. It will bring up an empty pivot table and pivot chart. You can then drag the fields to their respective areas. Let's drag agents to rows and sales to values. The default chart is a clustered column bar chart. However, if you want to change it, you can just right click and select another. Let's delete grid lines and legend. Change the chart title as well. Take a look at the chart. It works like a regular bar chart, so you can have different chart elements here. Change the style and color here. Or press Ctrl 1 for more options in the format pane. However, you notice that some field buttons are displayed on the pivot chart. Let's add an extra field so I can explain how these buttons work. Add product to rows. Go to the Design tab and change the layout to Tabular. You can also turn off subtotals. Doesn't matter, so I'll leave it. If you are here to watch my previous video on Pivot Chat, please watch them so you understand everything I just explained better. This button mirrors the column title, indicating the function Excel used to summarize the data. You can edit it on the Pivot table. Let's change it to total sales. These buttons are interactive and you can use them to filter the data. Let's filter our Donald in sales agent and check this button. Watch what happens to the pivot table. When you make changes in the pivot chart, it reflects immediately in the pivot table. Let's try product as well. Uncheck everything and select coffee and cream. There you go. I'll undo that. These allow you to collapse the agent field and expand to view product details. You can add fields to the chart or move them around. Let's move sales agents to columns. See? If you want to remove any field on the chart, you can right click on it and click remove field. Now, if you don't want the buttons displayed on the chart, right click and hide all or simply go to the analyze tab, click on field buttons and click on hide all. The cool thing about pivot charts is that you can double click on the horizontal axis and add several levels of details. All you have to do is double click on the axis and select the detail you want displayed. To keep it simple, let's go with country. Cool. Double click again. Let's add year. Cool. Let's stop there. Uh, let's add the expand and collapse buttons. So you can see how Excel drills down. Go to the Analyze tab, Field Buttons, Uncheck Hide All, 
and all other buttons except expand and collapse. Click on collapse and you notice that Excel will collapse one level at a time. Works the same way for expand. Another cool thing is that the chart size remains the same. Please note that the expand and collapse buttons work for the entire field. However, if you want to perform an individual drill down, right click on any of the agents. Let's go with Justin and select any level you want. Let's collapse to sales agent. Check that out. You can try the different levels on your own. Let me mention that there are other options when you right click on the axis. Similar to what is available in the pivot table, you can sort, filter, move fields around. Let's move country to columns. Now, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. Note that you can also use slicers to filter the chart instead of having several levels in the fields. You can add slicers from the analyze tab or the fields list. I discussed this in detail in my video on slicers. If you haven't seen it, the link is in the description box below. Let's insert slicers for year and country. I'll move product to rows and remove the other field. Move the slicers here. Go to options and change number of columns to two. These bars look skinny. Click on the bars, press Ctrl 1, and make the gap width 120. Sort the data from largest to smallest. Format the numbers. The chart is looking good. Let's see if the slicers work. Cool. Now we'll connect the slicers to two pivot charts. The first step is to insert a new pivot table. Copy the existing one and paste. You shouldn't paste two pivot tables on the same worksheet because it will expand when you add new data. However, we'll leave it for the purpose of this tutorial. Change the field to sales agent. Next, go to the analyze tab and insert a pivot chart. I'll choose a donut pie chart this time. Right click and hide all field buttons. Add data labels right here. Click on more options and check percentages. Click on any of the slices, go to series options and change the whole size to 50. One important step we haven't done is to name the pivot tables. That will help us identify the tables we want to connect. This will be products and this agent. Now to connect the two tables, right click on the slicer, right click on each slicer and click on report connections. Now let's see if it works. Cool. It is important to know that if this chart are on a different sheet from the pivot table, they would still work. So I'll cut the chart and slicers and move them to a different worksheet. Hold control, select each one, control X to cut and control V to paste it on a new worksheet. This is how Excel dashboards are created with pivot tables. I'll do a video on that soon. When you update your data with new information, it will reflect here in the pivot table and chart when you click the refresh button. Let's add a new agent, Joe, to the data. 
right click on the pivot table or chart and click refresh there you go pivot chart have some drawbacks and the major one is that you can not use it for all chart types for instance let's try to insert a map chart for the location field go to the analyze tab click pivot chart Excel will give you a preview of charts that can be created when you click on it. However, you get this message that the chart cannot be created. Now, there are several methods you can use to connect all types of charts to a pivot table. However, I will show you my favorite. First, get rid of the grand totals. Next, click on the cell next to the first row of the pivot table. Go to the insert tab and click field map. Here's our map. Excel automatically picks the data as the chart range. Now we have a map chart connected to a pivot table. This method works for almost all chart types for a single field pivot table. We can try for a tree map. What of all? and others if they are appropriate for your analysis. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.